Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and today we have an excellent PPC expert and guest to um, talk with today, Dr. Travis Ziegler. We are excited to have him, but before we get to that, I always want to remind you that we have a very free and fun Facebook group that you can always join with us to get all kinds of information from advanced sellers, beginner sellers. If you have Amazon questions and want to know how to sell on Amazon and just talk with other people. Well, this can be kind of a lonely business. You're sitting behind a computer doing your thing. And um, this is a great place for you to be able to connect with other like-minded sellers, both advanced and intermediate all the time. So mommyincome.com slash join us. And of course, we have a code word for every single one because we don't want Ray-Bans and all that kind of crazy stuff going on and people spamming and everything. So you have to have a code word. Today, it's PPC help. So make sure that you use that code word when you are applying to join the group and we will be happy to add you. And without further ado, we have an amazing guest today. Uh Dr. Travis Ziegler is a recovering optometrist turned e-commerce expert and entrepreneur. He found He's the founder of I Love, and his mission is to heal a million dry eye sufferers naturally. Um, all of his different success, joining from Amazon and different things, he specifically Amazon and helping people grow their businesses online is one of his great superpowers. So welcome, Dr. Travis Ziegler, to the show. How are you, Travis? I'm doing well, Kristen. Thanks for having me on. Oh, of course. I love, I love your story. And I know that when we connected before, I couldn't wait to have you on to just kind of talk about these different things. I love when people come um, discover their passions while they're thinking they're going to go into one thing and then they end up in something else and discovering um, uh, how they want to serve the world in, in their profession and otherwise. And uh, your story just fits so much to that. So first, can you tell us just a little bit about yourself and your family and if, if you have any um, hobbies that you love? I, I do have hobbies and I, I do have a family and I, I got started back in 2010, not in entrepreneur space or not in the e-commerce space, but I actually am an optometrist. So when you said Dr. Travis Ziegler, recovering optometrist, it's because I no longer practice. So I started practicing in 2010. I worked for my uncle and my wife is also a practicing optometrist. She graduated in 2011, started working for my uncle as well. And around 2013, I started getting this itch and I just couldn't figure out what it was. I was three years into practicing making good money. And I was like, but there's something that's missing. And I didn't know what it was at the time. So in 2014, a year later, we decided to do the three things you're not supposed to do. We quit our jobs. We moved across the country from Ohio to South Carolina. And then we started up two businesses there and we started up two practices to be more persistent. But um, when I was at my uncle's office, I was seeing about five patients an hour. And then when we moved down to South Carolina and started our own thing, I was seeing like one patient an hour. And so I got really bored. And there was a course that came across my desk and it taught me how to sell on Amazon. And so that same year that we opened up our two practices, we also started this e-commerce journey as well. And we started the e-commerce journey because my wife and I go on about three mission trips a year where we go to third world countries and we help give people glasses that can't afford glasses or they just can't get glasses because they don't have the ability to obtain them because they're just not in that area. And so we wanted to fund those mission trips, which is going to be about $12,000 a year. So my initial goal for this e-commerce journey was to make $12,000 a year to go on these mission trips. Now, here we are five years later into this journey. We sold our practices almost three years ago, and we're now doing this full time. And so it's been a lot of fun. And, you know, due to the success we've had, like you said earlier, we've kind of, we're helping others along this Amazon journey as well. So that's kind of everything in a nutshell. And then to go over a hobby, um, I love running, but I also play the ukulele. Awesome. That's so fun. My, my, my daughter started playing the ukulele. We have some uh, musicians in our family as well. My husband, my son has a boatload of guitars and he plays pretty, he can prolifically play any single thing that you give him. I swear he picked up a harmonica and he's already playing songs. It's like, I don't know. He just has that. So that's really fun. You have ukulele seems pretty, pretty, probably something I could play because it's a little bit easier than some of so the other easy. things. It's, it's fun. That's what, that's what makes it so fun and easy to pick up is because anybody could do it. Yeah, well, that's really, that's really cool. I I mean, I do have, it's on my bucket list to learn officially how to play guitar just so I can play for myself, you know, and like, it's just fun to be able to have a mobile instrument. My son tried to teach me, but you know, learning from your kids, that's just something different. I don't know. I have to take different lessons. He's a great musician, but not a great teacher. So it's one of those things that, so that's, that's really awesome. I'm glad that you're, you've done that. And I love the fact that, you know, you had this, this, 
you know, everybody starts with some sort of dream or they want to come, you know, want to, you have to pick a career while you're going through college. And they're, you know, I, I had to drop out of college because they, they kept saying, you have to declare a major or you can't come back. <laughs> like, there's nothing here for me. I got to find my own way. Um, but, you know, people pick careers and think, okay, this is really something that might interest me that I am into or that I like it. Or some people just pick it because it's got a nice salary. And then you realize that maybe that something's missing. I love the fact that, you know, you, you noticed that intuition and that you followed it to wanting to become something. So can you tell us a little bit about your product and what launched you into Amazon? Yeah. So the, this course taught me how to sell on Amazon and we were going through the, the course, picking different products. Like you hear, you see all these videos and everything about how to pick the right product. And we were in the, the baby range was like what we figured out how to, to launch. And we were looking at it and we didn't have kids at the time. And we just were like, we don't know anything about babies. Like how are we going to launch a product about babies that when we don't know anything about babies? So we were like, what do we know? And so we actually ended up launching a sunglass line and the sunglass line is called I love. And we launched, we were probably up to like 40 different SKUs of sunglasses, reading glass, glasses, blue blockers, like the ones I have on right now. But we've since narrowed that down to only four pairs, four SKUs because of other reasons we'll probably get into later. But we started this sunglass company that year. And by the end of the year, we actually ordered our first order of hundred units and they sold in seven days and we're like, okay, this is real. So we ordered a thousand and then we ordered another thousand of a different style. And we came out with two pairs of sunglasses for Q4 that year. Um, we started in July and we ended up doing about a hundred thousand dollars in that first year. So we were like, wow, this is real. This, it wasn't quite more than our practices revenue yet, but it was pretty close for just being six months old. And so we knew this was something we had to go all in on. Um, we just didn't know when. So we actually invested all the money back into it for about two and a half years before we sold our first practice because we had our practice income coming in. And so going back, we just, we ended up selling sunglasses. That was our first product. That's really awesome. And you know, I love the fact that you started with something that you know, um, you know, as part of my wholesale bundles framework, the number one thing that we talk about the first intake when people are like, Oh, I don't know what to sell. And I want to start doing wholesale and bundling, or maybe even private label products. Um, they try to go after all this, you know, like you said, the baby products or, you know, a software company that's saying, okay, if we, if we look at the data, I'm such a data person, I love to look at the data, but the data might've been pointing to this baby product you were looking into, but using that that sense of like well what do we really know because knowing your customer and what they want and need and desire and what their problems are that you're intending to solve with your product is so so important that is definitely the number one step so i love the fact that you were into the baby thing but realized like this is not this is not our lane and the more that you stay in your lane and what you know the more you can really focus and hone in on your your product your your brand all those different things and so that was really smart. And, and I love for those of you guys who are listening is E Y E. Um, I love, right. And do you have a, do you have a specific website for your ears or is it only on Amazon? Sunglasses are only on Amazon. Cause we only have four SKUs left and it's, it's more of a side project. Now we couldn't develop the customer demographic that we wanted to serve around the sunglass line. And so that's when we kind of pivoted the following year in 2016, we decided to go after a, a Facebook group. Actually, we'll probably get into this a little bit more, but yeah, so I love, just look up, I love sunglasses, EYE love sunglasses. And you'll see our, we only have two main products and there's a couple of SKUs on each of them. And that's all, that's all you can find now. Awesome. So what, what do you think it was about the former profession that, that you realized that you needed to change? So there's two different ways I can go with this. So there's a sunglass way. When we first started with, with sunglasses, the problem was that sunglasses are super expensive. If you want a high quality pair of sunglasses. And then the super cheap ones are actually dangerous for you. The ones that you buy for $5 at a gas station, they can actually be more dangerous for you than they are good for you. So we wanted to kind of find that middle ground of higher quality sunglasses with the protection inside the lens that's gonna protect you from the sun because that's the whole goal of sunglasses. The problem with most that you buy at the gas station is they have a UV coating on them, but you can actually rub that UV coating off if you clean them too much or you apply alcohol to them or something like that. And usually that UV protection wears off and therefore, when you're out in the sun, your pupil gets bigger because you have sunglasses on and you're letting more UV light in because your sunglasses no longer protect that. And so we were trying to find a middle ground between that. Our sunglasses are priced at around $30 and they're made of plastics that are unbreakable. So you can bend them and twist them. And then also you can, the lenses themselves are polarized and they're made of polycarbonate material and polycarbonate material is UV protectant built into the lens. 
And then it's also shatter proof. So you can't shatter it. So here's an example for the people that are actually watching like our sunglasses, you can actually bend completely and twist and they won't break. And so that's kind of the, the selling point that we wanted is we wanted that high quality pair that wouldn't break. And so, and then also the protection as well. So that was kind of the element we found with sunglasses. Now, the other side of the equation where we're at now with the dry eye side, we actually focus on a dry eye community. We, we want to heal 1 million dry eye sufferers naturally. And what we found in this space is pharmaceutical companies dominate this space. The problem with that is they, they, everything's high priced. Everything is super high priced. And the reason we came out with our dry eye product line is because we started a, a dry eye syndrome support community on Facebook. That's what it's called. You can go check it out. It's got about 14,000 members now or 13,000, somewhere around there. And we started this in 2016 because we wanted to serve a person and we, we determined just from being in our practice that we wanted to serve the dry eye niche. And these are people that have irritated, dry, red eyes. If you're a contact lens wearer and your eyes are irritated, we serve that person as well. And what we noticed is that everything they're using from eye drops that don't work, they just cover up a problem, to the pharmaceutical drugs and sprays and everything, they're expensive. And there's this one day that a customer came in, this is when I was seeing patients. And she said, this spray that you prescribed for me was $30 a month. And now it's $300 a month. They just increased the price overnight, just with the snap of their fingers. And they came to us saying, can you fix this? And I said, I'll try. And so I looked for a manufacturer for that product. And now it's our best selling product. And we released it in June of 2017, about six months after that person came to me. And so I think the big takeaway from that is listen to your customer, build your customers first, find somebody to serve, but then listen to them because they will tell you exactly what you should be coming out with. And that's how our dry eye product line evolved was we were, I was just treating patients and that patient came with, to me with a problem and me being an entrepreneur thought, I think we can do better. So we saw a need with the pharmaceutical companies charging way too much for their, their products. And we came in. And our product, our Hydrate Lid and Lash Cleanser, which I, I'm showing on the video, this is, we came out with it, it was $15 per bottle, it's now 20, um, just because prices increase. But the pharmaceutical company for a bottle smaller than this, almost half the size was $300 a month. That is so insane. And you know, it just kind of <clears throat> is eye opening, especially with your mission to be helping people throughout the world to, you know, have glasses and have um, things like this that they might be suffering from that they don't have the same access we have to every corner has an has a, you know, an eye doctor you can go see and most people at least well, it's 2020 you never know now but you know most people at some point had some sort of vision coverage I know I'm a contact lens wearer and so yeah dry eyes are definitely a big deal and, and the different types of things and you know price is skyrocketing because they can because they know that people need this and it's it's just awesome I love that you're listening to your customers and again another thing that people can do um, there's a lot of people listening that are like well I don't have a specific brand or I don't have a way to listen to my customers because they're all on Amazon and I can't reach out to them personally so you had a face-to-face -face interaction where you could deal with some customers and bring products but my number one tip for that for anyone who's listening and you don't feel like you can connect with your customers because because Amazon, you know, frowns upon outside connection. Like if you're not connecting through Amazon, it, you know, they can shut you down, right? Everybody's so paranoid about that. Um, the best way to listen to your customers is to, um, first of all, you can ask for feedback that's allowed through Amazon's messaging system, but also read reviews, read reviews on your product, read reviews on other people's comp competing products, because your customers in reviews are telling you, how many times have I read a review that says, I wish this, and they would say, I love this product. I only wish it had X, Y, Z. I only wish it came in a smaller size. I almost only wish it came with a droplet instead of a spray, you know, whatever it is. And then you can adjust your product to create something new. It might be a packaging issue. It might be a size issue. It might be a, a color, something like that. So always paying attention to your customers. That is how you find more and more success. That's how you refine your products. That's how you realize how to do that. So you guys did brilliantly at listening to your customers and coming up with something that not only solved their problem, but it was also extremely affordable for the majority of people. So kudos to you for that. So um, when you switched from um, your, your eyeglasses, your, your sunglasses to, um, this particular product that you're creating. Um, did you see a major shift in a, in a, 
um, products and customers or what what was the transition like from going from lots of sunglasses to then this quality product that you produced? Yeah, so the sunglass thing, we were playing the Amazon game. It was try to get your products as many reviews as possible, try to rank them as fast as possible, use PPC to stay up there. We were playing the Amazon game and we saw the writing on the wall back in 2016 that if you are just playing in Amazon's playground, you're going to get burnt and you're going to get burnt bad. And so we realized the importance of building an audience right away. And so the switch came just because we wanted to serve. And I think that's such a key point is to, to focus on serving somebody, whether it's a dry eye sufferer, whether it's someone that has problems with their marriage, whether it's someone just, just find a pain point that your product solves, your product has to solve a pain point or it has to get somebody to pleasure, one of the two, pain or pleasure. Pain's a lot easier to sell more. Pleasure, you can still sell more, but you have to get them to justify it a little bit more. And so when we made the shift to, I, I forget the initial question, but I'm just gonna keep going. We wanted to serve this person in the dry eye space because we saw the suffering that was in our chair. We saw the problems that people were having with it and we didn't see the solution out on the market that was that great. And so something that happened to us and if I get too far off topic, just reel me back in because I tend to do that quite a bit here. But what happened to us is when we moved to South Carolina, we decided we were going to have kids and we were diagnosed with not being able to have kids and with infertility. And that was detrimental to us. I mean, we were devastated by this and or not detrimental, but we were devastated by this because we always thought we were going to start a family when we moved to South Carolina. Well, we pursued Western medicine for three years. I'm a Western medicine trained doc. Western medicine is great for emergency situations and some other situations. But what happened was they told us that after three years, we had a 20% chance of getting pregnant if we did IVF, which is about the, the most intense form of infertility treatment. Well, we didn't feel like that was right for us. And we pursued Eastern medicine. And after about three or three to six months, we got pregnant and it awesome. completely shifted us into if this worked for infertility, why can't this work for dry eye? And so we started teaching people natural, holistic medicine, taking care of your body to heal your dry eyes. And this is where it was fun because we created this dry eye bootcamp challenge. And any of your listeners can go check it out. It's at dryeyebootcampchallenge.com. It's free. It's an eight week program where we give you one habit every single week to change in your lifetime or to change in your life, to make you healthier and to make you feel better and to get rid of your dry eye. But the thing is like, it doesn't sell our product at all. We don't sell our products in the bootcamp, but people learn to trust us as a result of this bootcamp. And we know our exact demographic because they're coming in because they have dry eye. Now on the, the flip side, we have products now to service these people. We have products to clean your eyelids, to clean your face, to clean or to moisturize your face, um, an omega-3 as a supplement. We have all these products to supplement the course now. You don't have to buy them, but they're there. And so a lot of the other products that are out on the market are filled with junk. They're filled with preservatives and other chemicals that we just don't want to put near our eyes. And so we're trying to create products that are safe for your eyelids, safe for using it on your face. And we're just getting rid of the preservatives and junk in your, your daily life. And so that's what the boot camp centered around is just healthier living. And it came as a result of something that happened in our life, reapplied to something that happened in this. And another good example of this is, um, the founder, I think it was of In-N-Out Burger, the founder of In-N-Out Burger back in like the 1930s saw a drive through window at a bank. And he's like, that would be genius if we had that at our restaurant. And so that's how the drive through window at restaurants came about, was he just saw it in a bank. See what you can do from applying from one industry and take it to another one and you can serve your customers better. And then as we built that audience, they tell us what, every time we wanna come out with a new product, we just ask them, what should we come out with next? Eye cream and face moisturizer. That's what our next product is. It's coming out soon. And to go back to something that you said earlier, and you talk incredibly fast and you like speed through so many important notes and you don't like stop to emphasize them. I'm going to emphasize this one that you said though, read your customers reviews, not just the positive ones, but the negative ones as well. The reason I bring this up is because we're coming out with our eye cream and face moisturizer which our customers told us to come out with next because it was part of their daily routine. I just finished up the copy for that eye cream and face moisturizer. How did I write the copy? I looked at the negative reviews of my competitors and smells like crap. One of my bullets is smells great. And you know, I forget what the other ones were because I did it like a month ago, but look at the negative reviews 
fix your product to make it positive and then put that in the bullet points. Because if you see it over and over again, then that's a problem that needs to be addressed. And so smells bad was over and over again for most of the eye cream and face moisturizers out there. And so that's why we're coming out with ours. And then ours is also going to be preserved with different, different preservatives that are a little healthier as well. So we're getting rid of that preservative stigma as well. So I don't remember if I answered your question in that whole rant, but of let's course you did, you thoughts. know, and that's really, um, I appreciate that. I, I know I need to, I do talk a lot really fast and need to slow down a little bit um, just for these, these little quick tips and things, because I think it's really, really important to, um, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are listening. There may be new beginners, they, whatever course or however they got introduced to Amazon. Um, most people eventually, you know, there's what I consider that Holy grail, the top of the food chain is eventually having your own private label product that you're manufacturing that you're, you know, that's kind of what they consider the top of the food chain in, in Amazon and any um, product based business is, you know, selling your own manufactured product is the best. But as people are growing and starting to learn what that is, um, like I said, reading those reviews and understanding the customer, because I, I don't care what you're selling, whether you're selling dry eye products or you're selling um, HDMI cables or you're selling anything. If you don't know your customer and you don't know their needs and their wants, and I even go down to the demographics, give this man or woman or person a name. Tell me how old they are. Where are they living? What do they need? What are their, what are their surroundings? What kind of job are they in? If you can think about that person and that customer and the exact things that they're really wanting and needing and dial in, you can make the best, you can make a mediocre product even and sell it to them. I mean, I'm not suggesting that, but you could make even a mediocre problem because you can sell them. You're selling solutions. That's what you're selling. You're not really selling products. You're selling answers to problems. You're selling solutions. And you have known your, your demographic and have figured out that these dry eye people, hello, I'm one of those. I'm a contact wearer. And I know that that's the struggle is real. I have issues. I mean, we'll talk af uh, after the show about those things. You know, you can give me some advice or maybe I can buy your products because I do have some issues there. But the reality is, you know, your customers, you know what they're saying, what they're needing. And you also are, you're, you're selling a solution. And I think that that's what most people are struggling with. They just want a product they can sell that makes a decent amount of profit and they want to look at numbers and just go, Hey, I'll solve it there. But if you can solve a pain point and a problem for someone, you don't have to solve it for everybody, by the way, you don't but to get $4 million in Amazon sales. You don't have to sell. You don't have to sell to everybody. You just have to sell to the same people over and over that are happy to buy from you because you've listened to them and created a product that they need. So I, I love that you're following that and you're following not only your, your heart and your desire, but the fact that you've learned something even from the Eastern medicine. I'm a very homeopathic holistic type of, um, person in general, I'm moving way more in that direction, especially um, with the pandemic and all the crazy things going on right now. Um, I've always, we, there, we have family members that think we're crazy, but that's okay. We, we choose that's to part do, of it. <laughs> well, that's part of the, um, just going in a more Eastern medicine, like you called it, or, you know, we look at a holistic kind of approach to what we're doing here and people think we're a little bit crazy, you, but your family also probably thinks you don't have a job. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I think they know a little bit better now, but in the beginning, it was definitely a struggle to be like, what is it that you do? People still ask me, are you still doing that Amazon thing? I'm like, I just kind of chuckle <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I am <laughs> for the last 17 years. <laughs> However, well, it's been, it's been a long time, but okay. So let's talk about that because you said, you know, transitioning into talking about the fact that you're a PPC expert and you started with the, the sunglasses and you started moving into the product now, but like you, you said something very interesting and I know everybody knows this and we want to know a little bit more, especially from your perspective is playing the Amazon game and you, and what that means to you and how you were able to um, make your workarounds. So to be able to give yourself not only success with your products, part of it is knowing your customer and giving them products they want, but let's be real. The other part of it is dealing with Amazon's algorithm and getting uh, customers to see your product and buy it via your listings, PPC, other things. So how did you figure out that PPC was going to have to be the next way to play on Amazon's playground? Uh, you know, you can see it in any, any of the, the marketing, the big marketing platforms. So Google, you used to type in a search to Google and you used to get all organic results. And then you started seeing this pay to play model where it'd be sponsored, 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 sponsored. And then the organic results came and that's still becoming more sponsored. Facebook, same thing. 
when you were first on the Facebook algorithm or on the Facebook not algorithm, but on your, on your Facebook page or your feed, no sponsored ads. Now it's almost all sponsored ads. And so that's what every platform is designed to do in the tech industry. You get a free model and then eventually it becomes a paid model. Now you may not physically be paying out of your pocket for Facebook, but you are because you're allowing them to show you ads. Amazon, same thing. They're trying to build up all of these, these customers. And so it wasn't very sponsored at first. There wasn't a lot of ad placements, but plus the, the algorithm, the, the, the sponsored products just wasn't that good of a system, you know, from five years ago compared to what it is today. And Amazon needs to make money. And yes, they make it from us on the 15% referral fee. Yes, they make it from people buying on their platform, but now they have this sponsored product platform that makes them billions of dollars a year. And so why not, if you can make a billion dollars a year, why not make $2 billion a year by putting more ad inventory out there? And what I mean by that is more and more spots on Amazon are, it's pay to play. So it used to be just the top spot was sponsored. Now it's the top four spots. And then you get four organic or eight organic, and then there's more sponsored. And so there's just, it's becoming more and more like that. And so you just need to know what triggers to pull or what levers to pull with Amazon ads in order to enhance your product, but then also to increase your organic rankings as well. And so usually when you pull the, the Amazon PPC lever to increase it, your organic rank should go up with it. And there's a couple of different numbers. Like I see people always bragging about their low ACOSs. And all I can think to myself is how many sales are you leaving on the table because you're so obsessed with decreasing your ACOS? And the reason I say that is because there's a number called total ACOS. Total ACOS is just how much are you spending in your total sales? And the reason you look at that number, because it incorporates both organic sales and sponsored sales or ad advertising sales. So there's a lot that we can get into with Amazon PPC. And I'm curious, which direction would you like to take it? I'm kind of giving you a choose your own adventure right now. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I mean, if I'm going to be upfront, the easiest and most effective Amazon ad that you can create. I mean, there's so much information out there. There's so many ad agencies. There's so many um, different. I mean, you, I I, had, I got to pick out of a handful of people that are sending me emails going, I want to be on your podcast to talk about PPC. But, you know, I, I've got to pick people that, number one, have amazing stories and have, you know, uh, amazing purpose, because um, that's one of the reasons why you know, we connected so well as well is because not only is your story just fantastic and genuine, but it's also um, super helpful to, for other people to just learn from your experience and all these different things. But honestly, um, yeah, the I most effective I ad. I got it from that. <laughs> yeah. so, just, go ahead. Yeah. So, um, you know, you just saying that just sparked my brain to sometimes it's Monday morning. You know, we talked about this Mondays, it's Friday, it's Monday, it's kind of the same day. But anyway, so with, with Amazon advertising, everything is 80 20 in your business. So 80% of your revenue comes from 20% of your products. 80% of your ad sales are coming from 20% of your ads. And so what you need to do is figure out where that 20% is that's driving all that and focus on that. The problem that I see with most people that are running Amazon PPC is they're doing sponsored products, which is your typical exact phrase, broad and auto campaigns. And then they're running sponsored brands, which are your headline search ads, which are your videos. And now there's new sponsored display ads. And the new sexy one on the market is Amazon DSP, demand side platform. And then now there's attribution, Google and Facebook. And I'm telling you to ignore everything but sponsored products. If you can master, if you can, if you can get, if you can master sponsored products ads, which is the exact match type, phrase and broad and auto campaigns. That's what matters the most. The rest are just kind of more brand awareness, more top of funnel, if you're thinking of it as a funnel. Whereas in, if you focus on search advertising, which is sponsored products, that is the 80-20. That is where probably 80% of your revenues are coming from that are driving most of the results in your business. And that's what you need to focus on. The second way that you can apply 80-20 to your Amazon advertising is that 80% of your revenues are coming from 20% of your products. Stop focusing on all your products with advertising and focus on that 20% of products that are producing 80% of your revenue. And the reason you do that, that's where the profit's coming from. And so why would you take your profit and split it between all your products when if you focus it on this one area, then all of a sudden your profit's gonna take off. 
It's, it's that simple. So 80, 20 rule, and then let's take it even one step further. 80% of your Amazon advertising sales are coming from 20% of your search terms. And so there's a report inside Amazon called the search term report, and you can download that and see where all the term, the exact term that is causing all your sales. And if you look at it, if you look at the, like my, my search term has like 10,000 search terms on it, my search term report. And if I narrow it down to the 2000 at the top, that re, that's like responsible for 90% of our revenue. And then if I narrow it down to even the top 100, which is like the top 1%, that's responsible for 50% of my revenue. And so if you just focus your efforts on to what's actually working, then your profits, your revenue, your organic ranking will soar. Now I hear your, your viewers and your, your listeners saying, well, what do I do with my other products that I'm not advertising for anymore? Don't worry about them. They, we, we have products that we don't advertise for anymore, but due to the brand that we've built and this clout that we've built with our brand, people buy our main product. We're selling about 250 of these a day and they buy this and then they see the other products. They, they try it, it works. They come back and buy it again, but then they see our other products. We sell an eye makeup remover. We sell a face wash. We sell an eye cream and face moisturizer coming soon. We have eyelid wipes and we have all these different products. And once they try one of them, the main product, the 80-20, then they're going to try these other ones and trickle down. And we sell like 10 a day of those, which is a great, you know, adjunct, but we're not advertising for them anymore. Well, and, so, and one of the yeah. things <clears throat> that, that I'm, you know, I'm glad that you said that because I love when people reinforce the things I'm already teaching, right? Because people are always listening to me and like, okay, great. But they, you know, their ears perk a little bit more when we have an, an additional expert saying the very same thing. And what I've told you guys before that Travis is so gracious to repeat only in a different way that I'm saying it is honestly do what works and then do more of what works. So with that top 1%, with the top 1% of those keywords that they're spending ad spend on, they have confidence that that, the confidence that that product that they're selling is then going to naturally sell the rest because they're building um, brand credibility. And they're saying, oh, I love these eye drops or this eye spray or whatever it is. And let's see what else. It's natural for all of us um, ladies out there. If you try to make up brand, if you've tried a Jeffree Star lipstick, like, look, I'm not promoting any brands here, but I love my Jeffree Star lipstick, not because of the person or because of the actual brand, but because it's the best dang lipstick I ever bought. You put it on once, it lasts all day. It doesn't get flaky. It lasts a long time. So now that I know that I've tried that lipstick, I'm more apt to try the blush, the eyeshadow, the whatever else that they sell, because I know they spent time and energy making a very high quality product that works really well for me. They don't have to sell me anything else. They sold me the one product and now I'm interested in going, well, this is the best lipstick I ever had. I wonder how they do with their mascara. And so I'm going to go try their mascara naturally. That's exactly what we're talking about is that they don't, Travis doesn't have to spend a ton more on some of the secondary products that they sell and provide because that one that they're spending the most money on is going to earn the trust of the customer that then they're going to start buying the other products. For those of you guys who don't sell <clears throat> a ton of, or you have a bunch of miscellaneous stuff, maybe you're doing some arbitrage sale or you're doing different niches in, in wholesale take your top product that you have and learn how, like this is a word I know I invented it or, or just I say it even if it's not a real world is <clears throat> real word is deluxify. If you've got one product that's selling really, really well, figure out how to deluxify that product or make a spinoff or a variation or something of that product. Don't reinvent the wheel every single time because once people buy that product, they're like, oh, if this one's great, we're going to buy the next one and the next one. So, you know, <clears throat> basically going smaller and more focused rather than big and broad, like other people seem to train about those things. So thank you for kind of bringing that up and, and realizing that like, if you really do micro focus on something that's doing really well, um, the rest will naturally have higher sales because your brand or your store is boosted. And then people realize that like these people have other products and then they start to start being becoming a little bit more brand loyal. And, you know, you kind of took my thunder that I was going to say next, because I was going to kind of relate this to like a wholesale customer, because I know you have a lot of wholesale listeners in your audience. And, you know, if you're a wholesaler and you have like a hundred SKUs, the same concept applies. 20 of those SKUs are driving all your revenue. Get rid of the other 80 
and just focus on those 20. And so we've done that, like I said, with the sunglasses, we had up to 40 SKUs at one time, and now we're down to four. And that was because those are the four SKUs that were really profiting the most, profiting, not just revenue. And our revenue in our sunglass company went from 2.5 million down to 500,000 a year, which is where we're at now. But the profit didn't change that much because we got rid of all the SKUs that were just kind of, yeah, they were doing okay. They were making $1,000 a year or $10,000 a year, but we kept the ones that were making 100 to 200,000 a year. And that's what's allowed us to like, really just kind of keep that brand around without doing much work. And we just do the Amazon PPC side and we focus on the 20% the of search terms that produce 80% of the results. And that leads us to organically rank really high for those sunglasses as a result of that. So you told us about your, pro- your, your sponsored product ads are going to be the most efficient and best way to use the product ads, ignore everything else and really just do your sponsored products. But how do you use that? How did you guys use that to scale? So you, so but I love that idea. I'm all for that. And actually, this is what we do every year end. We know we go through evaluating what inventory is worth bringing back. And we've actually cut back and not only on vendors, but also on the SKUs that we carry because we're keeping the top performers and we're kind of cutting the cutting the dead ends over there. Even though they make a little bit of money, it's not worth the more effort we put into that 20%, the better we are. When it comes to scaling though, how do you balance that between your cutting and you're also increasing? Um, where How do you use your PPC ads to kind of scale? Yeah. So the beautiful thing is you kind of, you kind of talked about it a little bit. So you're reducing your inventory, you're reducing your SKU count, you're reducing your advertising because you're reducing your product loads. And so now that you have all this money that's not sitting on a shelf in inventory and you're not having to pay more money towards that, you have more money to focus on the products that are working, which we've talked about. Now to scale sponsored products, exact match campaigns. Exact match campaigns are the only way to scale on Amazon PPC. Broad, phrase, and auto campaigns, those are called discovery campaigns. The whole goal of broad phrase and auto campaigns is to discover new search terms that are working. Once you find a search terms that that is working, we we pull it out and peel it out and put it into an exact match campaign. And that exact match campaign, we can then change the budget, we can change the top of search bid adjustment, we can change everything in that campaign to scale that that search term. Now that search term is only going to scale as far as the searches per month. So that's why we have these discovery campaigns still going because then we keep spitting out new search terms that are working, putting them into an exact campaign and scaling those. So the scale comes not from trying to scale one search term necessarily, but to scale lots of search terms in an exact match campaign and then scale those and make them profitable. Now, I am a huge believer in single keyword ad campaigns. And a single keyword ad campaign is just simply one product, one keyword, exact match type. It's a single keyword ad campaign. Just think about the name of what I'm saying, and then you'll Mm -hmm. understand it. And the reason I love those is because you can customize the entire campaign into one. Now, I I also hear your, your viewers and listeners saying, that's a lot of campaigns. Yes, it's a lot of campaigns. So we have close to, I think, 800 right now. But at one time, we had 4,000. And I just trimmed them down to the 80-20. We got rid of the 80% of the, the, the campaigns that were just doing ho-hum. And we kept the 20% that were working so we could put more money behind those. And so you can apply the 80-20 rule to pretty much everything that we're doing. And those exact match keywords are, are crucial to our scale. But then we, if you have budget left over, we have the broad phrase and auto campaigns going to discover new ones. If you don't have budget, then you should just be focusing on the exact match. Now, with that being said, I believe in automation. Automation, there is a spot for it in Amazon PPC, but you have to do it right. There's a ton of softwares out there and automation when done right can help you so much. You don't wanna automate everything. You still need to think about Amazon PPC and still strategize. Same with your business. You need to strategize your business. You don't need to be doing the day-to-day stuff. Same thing with Amazon PPC. You don't need to be doing the keyword bid adjustments, the budget, adjustments. Those are all mathematical formulas that a software can do. What you need to be focusing on is I'm going to be going after this product this quarter. And if it doesn't work this quarter, then we're going to pull all advertising budget from it. Or this product's been dying. What can we do to fix this product that's been dying? You need to focus on the strategy of it to then let the automation take care of all the day-to-day. 
most PPC people that are handling PPC or even business owners are in there every day changing bids, which is, it's not doing anything. Let a, let a mathematical formula take care of that. So automate certain parts so you can strategize and think bigger with Amazon PPC. And when it comes to, I love, I love that because I, I definitely, um, especially the day-to-day with Amazon, there's so many things that you like, that could be like two people's full-time jobs to try to do all those things. <laughs> um, so I'm all about that automation and um, different things because they change everything all the time. But I, the data nerd in me absolutely loves that single word campaign um, because that to me is like, that gives you such precise, exact responses that you kind of, you know, pass or fail within just, just maybe a few hours, a few days of knowing that's the top keyword or it's not, or this is the one that's bringing in business or it's not. And so I love, I, I love the idea of that, but I'm so glad you clarified it with the automation. Cause I thought that could be a full-time job managing all those ads and, and those different things. But I do love like the idea of that single word, because, you know, usually um, I'm all about narrowing the keyword words for people. I'm constantly telling everyone that the, the attributes of your item, the exact thing, don't get sexy, don't get fancy. Like if this is what you're selling, tell people exactly what you're selling. What color is it? What, what are the attributes that are bringing people to the listing to begin with? Focus on those because all the other fancy, fancy stuff, like that's not driving traffic to your listing. What's driving traffic to your listing is I'm looking for, you know, <laughs> unbreakable green sunglasses, blah, 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 whatever it is. Those are, that's, what people are typing into Amazon. They're not, they're not sellers like us. They're not looking at algorithms and keywords and all this stuff. They're literally like green sunglasses or pink frog, you know, pink pig blanket. I know we were just talking about that at my house the other day. So it came to mind, but (laughs) the idea that like, that's exactly what you're looking for. Size, shape, color, attributes. What's it made out of? What's the purpose of it? Um, You know, a decorative shelf for the bathroom. That's literally what your customers are typing into Amazon. They're not typing in brand names necessarily. I mean, it depends if they're looking for, you know, specific granola bars or something, they might be doing that. But a lot of people are just browsing, looking for something similar or something that's going to work. I mean, I bought these shelves back right back behind me on Amazon looking for corner shelves in a rustic wood looking color. Like that's what I was looking for. I found them on Amazon. I didn't, it wasn't fancy. It literally like, what's it made of? What size is it? How fast can it get here? You know, how easy is it is, is to install that's later on. So I love that particular thing that you put there and just thinking about scaling um, every guy, you guys don't be afraid to cut the loose ends. We got to make cuts. This is business. It's you don't, you can't hang on to every little thing that's making you $25 here, $25 there. I do have a really great question. I hope you have an awesome answer for it, which I think you will is a lot of people are there. There's mixed feelings. There's mixed, um, advice out there about how much people should be spending on ad campaigns. There are people that have said you need to spend 100% of your product cost on your listing to keep it moving. Like basically, if your sunglasses are $30, then you're going to spend $30 on that PPC ad to be able to sell those. Would you have a percentage in a budget that you always work within when it comes to not just new products, but also products that you've been having that maybe you don't have any campaigns on that you're looking? Because a lot of the listeners right now, like maybe, have some PPC, but they're not really sure what they're doing or what should the budget be? I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. So there's a lot of different ways I can take this, this answer because we talked about, you talked about budgeting a little bit, but then how much you should spend towards um, Amazon PPC. And the nice thing like where, where my business is with, I love is I, I'm so confident with where our ads are at that I have an uncapped budget. Now it took us a long time to get to that uncapped budget because it's scary to think that Amazon could just spend $30,000 in a day if they wanted to, if something happened, but it's probably not going to happen. But the uncapped budget came as a result of getting so efficient with our ads. Now, let's go to ACOS. ACOS is the biggest thing that I see people fight over all the time. And for those I, that don't know, can you just define that just for people who may not have any idea what you're talking about? Advertising cost of sale. That's what okay. ACOS is. And advertising cost of sale is just pretty much a percentage of how much it costs you to put the ad on Amazon and then how many sales you're getting it, you're getting from that. And so it's advertising sales, or excuse me, advertising spend divided by advertising sales. For those that are not in the Amazon world, it's the reverse of ROAS, which is the return on ad spend. That's reverse. So that's your ad sales divided by your ad spend. Why did Amazon do the opposite? Who knows? It's Amazon. That's, That's what Amazon likes to do. They like to do the opposite of everything. 
So the, the reason that ACOS comes in to such a, a vital role in your Amazon PPC is I'm a big believer in that if you want to push your product in organic rankings, then you should always go for a break-even ACOS, a break-even advertising cost of sale. And that is simply just your profit margin. That's all it is. And so what I like to do is take the price of our product minus Amazon fees, minus the cost of goods sold. That's going to give you your, your profit. And then you take that profit and divide it by your retail price. That's your profit margin. And so your profit margin should equal your ACOS because that is your break-even ACOS. If you sell at that ACOS or lower, you're making money. If you sell at that ACOS or higher, you're losing money. Now, there are certain situations that it's okay to lose money in advertising, like our product is a consumable. You order this every single month. And when you order this every single month, I can break even or I can lose money in the front end because I know you're going to come back for more. And so we could get into lifetime value and all that, but I'm not going to get into that because it's a little more advanced than what right. we're at right now. And so your ACOS should equal your break even or your break even ACOS should equal your profit margin for your product. That is my belief. A lot of people fight me on that, but I never go for that sexy 7% ACOS because all I think about, like I said earlier, is how many sales are you leaving on the table from losing organic rank from not pushing that more? Now, with that being said, the product I just showed you, we shoot for a 62% ACOS because that's our, that's our profit margin. That's our break-even ACOS. Mm -hmm. um, excuse me, 52% is our break-even. We target 62% because we're willing to lose money in the front end. But that being said, we get about a 30% ACOS because our ads are so efficient. We trim the 80-20. We do that trimming all the time, pretty much weekly. We're trimming. And going a step further and going into budget, I believe that you should do about 20 to 25% of your revenue from the previous month should go towards your advertising budget for this month. Now that can be Facebook, Google, Amazon, whatever you want to do. So how we do it in our business is we look at the revenue from last month on Amazon and we take either 10 to 20% depending on the product or 0% depending on the product. And we, we specify it on a per product basis, but overall it's around 20% of our previous month's revenue. And most, most people try to get that down to 10%, but we're still in a in growth phase of our company. We still want to push as much as possible because we know it's going to pay off when we either sell or in seven years time. So it just depends on your goal. So you can use 10% of your budget if you're trying to profit more, but if you're trying to push and get more sales, I'd go up to 20% and then take some of that profit and put it into lead generation to build your audience too. So 10 to 20% of your budget should go towards Amazon. And then for ACOS advertising cost of sale, that should be your break-even ACOS should be at your profit margin. So that's just my opinion. It's fought all the time, but I am very adamant about that. And that's what we do for our clients. That's what we do for us. And it works so incredibly well. That's really, that's a really good um, explanation of that for people that are doing that. And I know that that's very helpful for those that are doing um, their own brands or their own specific, I mean, we do wholesale bundles here. So that's basically everybody, their own brand. They might be using products um, for um, different wholesale companies, putting into a, a gift set or a gift kit or whatever that, that may be. But so, but that is their, their basic, their, their wholesale bundle is their their brand their product that they're pushing and so looking at that and and their break-even percentage um to be able to get those organic sales because what you can't buy is customer loyalty and so if you've got a great product and you're willing to break even on it to get some visual visualization on amazon to get some traffic to get some interest your break even cost is really just going to help you there because you're not losing money at that point you're breaking even you're basically it's like going to a trade show or going to a place where you're, you see people handing out free product they're like why would they give their product away they believe in it so much that if that person gets one and gets it for free and loves it they're going to buy more they're going to tell friends and family about it. This was y'all before TV, before, you know, when it was just radio ads, word of mouth sometimes is way more, um, 
valuable than you could ever see. And that's kind of what you're doing with your ACOS is you're breaking even to spread the word about your product a little bit more so that it gets more organic. You're working with people, but you're also working with Amazon's wonderful algorithm that, you know, anyone could be a billionaire if they can crack that code. Um, but the, the reality is that's what you're working with. And the more people that you can, you know, maybe you can break even or lose a little bit of money again, um, like you're doing with one of your products, knowing that that customer is going to fall in love with that and come right back. And then, then, then you have that lifetime value customer, right? And, so if and, you're selling products that are consumable, that is an absolute great strategy. If you're selling something that's not consumable and you doesn't require or doesn't lend itself to more repeat business, then you have to get a little bit more crafty about that because you're going to want to make profit on each sale that you have there. But getting... I can't say enough about getting organic searches on Amazon without PPC. I've had enough traffic on different listings to be able to like, I can end my PPC because I'm at the top of page one, almost on every single product that I have. And I no longer have to pay much for the ads to be able to get there. So um, that's a really great perspective to talk about with PPC. Yeah. And then bringing this full circle back to the beginning of our conversation and talking about total ACOS or total advertising cost of sale. That's what you should be measuring. That's all that matters because if your total advertising cost per sale is lower, we go up between 10 and 15% for that. And that is simply just your advertising spend divided by your total sales, not your advertising sales, but your total sales. And we try to get that between 10 and 15%. That is the perfect balance between organic sales and advertising sales. And so in, in your situation where you're number one, your total ACOS is probably below 5% as a result of that. And that's the key thing is measuring that total ACOS instead of just ACOS. So our main product, we push this a lot harder. We go for an 18% total ACOS with this product only because we know that, like you said, lifetime value is a lot higher. Whereas in our sunglasses, we know the total ACOS. Those are mostly an advertising product. Organic ranking for a product that there's millions of them on Amazon, it's almost impossible. And so that product is mostly advertising sales. So we have a 30% total ACOS in that one because most of our sales are driven from advertising. And so you just gotta, it's very customized on a per product basis. And like you said, between consumables and non-consumables, you'd be surprised by how many people actually order what you might sell, even though it might not be a consumable. I have sunglasses, it's a little different because we have different sizes and colors. Um, and then something else you, you sparked in me as you were talking was a big thing that I see, a big problem is if you have a listing that has lots of variations, you only have to advertise on the bestseller. Don't worry about advertising on everything else. We have, we have five different colors of sunglasses on this one listing. We only advertise for the brown pair because that's the main one that sells. And the other ones get anywhere from one to five sales a day right now in December because there's no sun, all the way up to 10 to 30 sales a day in peak season when our main listing gets like 70 sales in peak season, but it only gets like five to 10 right now. And so that's something else to keep in mind. That's that I was glad, glad that you touched on that because, you know, I have issues like as being the data person that I am and, and just the, I have issues with variation listings because I feel like they don't get the love and attention that Amazon should give them. And the, the way that you have to kind of sort out the data and figure out which ones are the best ones and not so much is, is a little bit more complicated. I, I prefer to do single listing items, but that's a really good point with the advertising. And that was part of why I did that because I want, I, I like to separate my different listings but yep. as we're getting more into a uh, variation type listings, I'm realizing how to work with them a little bit better to continue to drive that traffic. And that's what I love about what you were just saying is that we have something that's like, I don't, I don't know, basic deluxe and, you know, super plus of what we, you know, we're working with and advertising on just one of them, then people at that point are already landing on your listing and then they can see the variations in front of them. So you don't necessarily have to spend that money on all of the things, just the one that that's performing the best. And then uh, naturally other eyeballs will be seeing that it's a, it's almost like the end cap display of, of a grocery store you know they pay for that that specific space but then they're able to put their top sellers at the eye level and then other their, their other products at you know bottom and top and you know just marketing um but marketing at its best. Those people really know what they're doing. And that's just really what you're doing with your PPC is playing Amazon's game but also um positioning yourself for the best um amount of sales you can get from your demographic. So I think, you know, positioning with, with that is really a great tip. So what, can you tell us just a little bit before, as we're wrapping up here, a little bit more about the charity and the mission work that you're doing, yeah. because I'm just personally interested in that. 
Yeah. So back in 2006, my wife and I went on a mission trip to Ecuador. It was the first time we'd ever been out of the country, or at least me, she'd been out of the country before. And we were in the slums of Ecuador and we were providing exams and glasses and sunglasses for these people that just had no, they had nothing, but they were happy. And it was, it was cool. It was in the mountains. Um, and there was this one farmer that came in and he had a re bright red eye and he had glaucoma, which is where your pressure inside your eye is built up and it causes nerve damage, which causes blindness. He was unfortunately blind in that eye and we couldn't bring it back, but his pressure inside that eye was 80. 80 is four times the amount that it should be. It should be 20 or under for most people, or like you and I, it's probably around 20, mine's 10, and his was 80. And so you can think of pressure like you pressing on something or like a pressure inside a balloon, because that's what it's kind of like, and it's pressing on this eyeball. And so he was in extreme pain and I treated him for about four hours in the clinic that day, brought his pressure all the way down to 30 and didn't really know if I was making an impact because he was like this hard nosed farmer. And he got down on his knees, started bawling and hugged me and said, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I started crying. This was in 2006, 14 years ago. And in that moment, I knew that this is what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. And so my wife and I go on these mission trips three times a year, not in 2020, but Every, every um, fall, we go to the Caribbean. We go to Jamaica in the fall. Every summer, we go to a Caribbean island. Um, usually, it's like St. Lucia or anywhere else down in the Southern Caribbean that doesn't have that much access. And then in the spring, we usually go to a Latin American country. I've been to Ecuador, Peru, and Mexico. And so we try to do three of those a year. And we go into these villages that just don't have access to care. We set up a clinic. There's usually about 40 of us, only about eight are doctors. So if anybody wants to get involved, reach out to me. And we give close to two to 3,000 eye exams in a week. And we hand out glasses and sunglasses. And one of the, the coolest things is giving a pair of reading glasses to somebody that can no longer read. We all lose our ability to read around the age of 40 to 50. And a simple pair of reading glasses that you and I can get over the counter at our store, that, that fixes it. And these people don't have access to that. So when you take a 70 year old that's been blind for 30 years, blind in quotes, because she doesn't have glasses, you throw a pair of glasses on her. She can read the Bible. Now she can work again. She can do all these things that she wasn't able to do. And another good example in Jamaica is fishermen. Fishermen need to line their hooks. Yeah. And they can no longer line their hooks. They become a beggar. And so our mission in life is to, to help solve the 1 billion people, 1 billion with a B that are blind due to lack of classes. So that's the dent we're trying to put in. Right now, we just do those MASH clinics that I just discussed, not sustainable in the long run. And so we're trying to figure out how to create a schooling system down in the Caribbean specifically, where we can train people to go to their islands, their respective islands, fix the problem that's, that's superficial, like reading glasses. And for bigger problems, they send back to us in the, the main clinic area, so like cataracts, glaucoma, diabetes are the three biggest problems down there. Um, and then if you go over to Africa, there's a problem called trachoma, which is a bacterial infection of the eyes that causes blindness, very common in mother and children. So mothers pass it to their child and then they just keep reinfecting each other and mm -hmm. it causes scarring. And so like our spray, for example, can take care of that. And so that's another example of we're trying to develop products to help not only solve problems here in the US, but also to solve problems that are causing blindness that don't need to cause blindness. And so that's kind of our main mission in life. We use the profits of I love to do that. And we also use the profits of the agency to go all towards our foundation. And then the foundation pays for all this. So how, if, if anyone is listening and this has just touched a heartstring, I know for me it has, I mean, I have my, I have contacts in right now. I have my teeters right here. Just, I mean, I just turned 40 and I know exactly what you're talking about, but you know, the it's access. Like we literally, I can go to Walgreens if these ones break and I can go and, and for, for a couple of dollars, I mean, maybe five bucks at the max can get my cheaters. And now it's like, Oh, I can see, I can, you know, you can't, like you said, with your reading or your Bible or anything else, you can't just hit the button and, and adjust the font. That's, that's what I do on my computer screen. Right. And so for, for a simple pair of glasses. So if anyone wants to get involved or get more in touch with you, not only with your charity, but of course, um, this, let's talk charity first. And then we'll talk about your, your agency as well, because obviously all of your profits are going to this great thing. And I, I can't stress it enough. You guys for, for probably a couple dollars of donations, somebody can see 
see and read again for the first time and, and who knows how long. And that is just such an important thing. I mean, for the cost of your Starbucks coffee, someone can read again. And so, um, I mean, I'm not pitching everybody to like make donations, but I just, I, that's what I'm thinking to myself. It's like, oh my gosh, where can I go and help contribute to um, this cause? Because we can all, you know, do little things that can help someone around the world who, you know, for them, it seems like a miracle for us. It seems like, okay, I gave up a Starbucks today or something. So um, where can people find more ways to get involved with that. Yeah, so I love cares, E Y E L O V E C A R E S. I love cares.org is our foundation website. I believe you can donate right on that page. Um and you can you can try that if you have any problems just reach out to me. And don't be afraid to reach out to me anyways and just kind of ask how you can get involved. The easiest thing that you can do though is if you have old glasses around your house that are clean still. We don't want the disgusting ones. But if you have old glasses around your house, donate them to your local Lions Club. We get all our glasses from the Lions Club. And if, if you, you can, you can just go buy a bunch of readers, donate them to the Lions Club. We use glasses from Lions Clubs to go on all our trips. We take big old containers and ship them down there. If you guys think shipping from China is hard with your <laughs> container loads, try shipping medical devices to a third world country. It's not fun. We got stuck in Ecuador for 10 hours, but that's another story. And <laughs> not, not our container, us physically got stuck. So it was not fun. But, you know, ilovecares.org is where you can donate money. You can also donate glasses to your Lions Club. And then if you want to come on a mission trip with us, reach out to me because I'd love to get you on a mission trip. It will change your life. It will make you realize how blessed you truly are and it will humble you. That's why I think I go on them three times a year because every time I go, I come back more humbled than I was before. And then I look around and I'm like, man, we have it really good here. And people still complain while, when we're here. So you have it better than you think. Perspective is everything, isn't it? I, I know that when um, my husband and uh, when my children were very young, I actually only had one at the time and he went to help build um, a church and an orphanage over in um, Slovakia. And, you know, he came back, I mean, just the stories after stories of just hearing, like it just opens your eyes to see how much, um, how much we really are blessed and how much we can really, you know, for, for, you know, like, I, like you said, donating glasses, I'm pretty sure we have probably have four or five pairs of glasses. Cause you never know what to do with them when you're kind of, you need a new prescription, but your other glasses are pretty good. Like, you know, just doing the small things like that. I think that we just um, need that perspective every now and then to, to realize that um, we are truly blessed and have so much in this world, in this country that, you know, we can share, share the love throughout the world for people that, you know, really could use it. So I really appreciate that. How can, how can people get in touch with you as far as your, your PPC agency? I know you have a free course on your website as far as uh, a PPC uh, beginners course that people can take. Tell us more about that. Yeah. So profitablepineapple.com is our website. We're the Profitable Pineapple Ads Agency. Why did we choose that name? Because it sounded exactly as silly as you're smiling as, <laughs> um, as I'm saying it. So it, it, we just picked it for no random reason, but profitablepineapple.com. I have a free course on there. That's great for beginners and those that are doing under 25,000 a month. It's a, it's a little bit more of a manual system with the Amazon PPC, but it doesn't cost that much to run the manual system. It's got a couple softwares that we use in that, but it's nothing too expensive. And then I also have an automation course on there. The automation course, you do have to pay for that one. And the reason you pay for it is because if you can't afford the course, you can't afford the software that, that the course has in it. So um, that's for people that are doing 25,000 a month and up. And then if you want all this done for you, we have an agency and that's if you're doing 50,000 a month, you'll, you can click a button on that and you'll, you'll fill out a form and it will come right to me. And then we'll get on the phone and see if it's right for you. And then we can kind of point you in the right direction. If we're not right, maybe something else is. Um, and, you know, the key thing is with all of this Amazon PPC is focusing on the 80-20 and then automation. Those are the two big things I want you to take away from this whole show is automate the correct things and then focus on the 80-20. And that's kind of the, the biggest thing. Um, and then... We're also on Facebook, Amazon PPC Pros. That's a, a group of Amazon advertisers and Amazon sellers. And we just kind of hash out different ideas on best practices. And we go live there once a week and answer any questions. And then Amazon PPC Pros on YouTube as well. So you can join me there. 
Awesome. Thanks so much for sharing all this, you guys. All the links, <clears throat> excuse me, all the links will be in the show notes. They'll also be uh, under the video in YouTube. So you'll be able to access all of these links. You don't have to hurry up and write them all down, especially if you're walking the dog or you're driving your car or something like that. Just make sure to uh, download the episode, get the show notes and be able to um, write these things down. This is These are excellent resources. You guys know <clears throat> how I'm very careful and guarded about um, the different things that I let people listen to on this show. And so, uh, you know, that it's, it's really good stuff coming from Travis and his agency and all the different things. Again, um, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your, not only your story, but your expertise. I know that I've got some gold nuggets myself and I'm really happy to do that. I'm going to check out, I love cares and, um, hopefully we will, um, see you another time on the Amazon files. Kristen, thanks. Thanks so much. We'll see you guys same time, same place next week on the Amazon files.